Hi, this is Richard Murray with another session of Parking Lot Theology. I had the pleasure of teaching my oldest son, I have seven children, and I had the pleasure of teaching my oldest son how to read. Uh, we bought a reading course and I was able to do that with him every day. And, uh, and he's a fantastic reader and he's a fantastic writer. But it's one of the great honors of my life that I was able to teach him, teach him that. And I think the message in that for me is that there's something special when, you, when we let our father figures teach us how to read. Doesn't mean they tell us what the text means, but they teach us just how do you look, you know, how do you look at the text? How do you interpret it? How do you relate it to other things? And so anyway, I want to build on that notion and take us back to the church fathers, the uh, church fathers in the first few centuries um, following Christ's birth to see how they read scripture. And I think one of our problems is, as moderns, we're moderns, postmoderns, whatever you want to call us, wherever you may be on the scale, we've stopped letting the fathers teach us how to read. They're the ones that were there when the text was written. They had the culture from in which the text was written. But we don't, we take their text, but we don't let them teach us how to read. And uh, I think one of the most exciting things in my life has been, as I've studied the early fathers, that they read texts in entirely different ways than we do. For instance, let me mention three of the great church fathers to you, Origen, Gregory of Nyssa, and Augustine. They all believed that basically when you read a scripture that the scripture is to be read allegorically or symbolically. There's a deeper meaning, a census plenior, uh, fuller meaning that Latin term means behind the scripture. and That's why what we're to draw from scripture. Gregory of Nyssa, for instance, said that uh, we turn the text over and over in our minds until we receive some beneficial understanding of it that's, that does honor to Christ and that has the nature of Christ saturated with it. And that may not come from just a literal on the surface reading. The text has to be turned over and over again. Augustine said, uh, in something I like to call the, the rule of character, that if scripture ever literally seems to attribute evil or violence or cruelty to God, that it has to be read allegorically. It can't be read literally because that's impossible. Uh, because we know through the love of Christ that God uh, is, would never be capable of committing evil or approving evil or ordaining evil or any of that. Uh, so, um, and then Origen comes in and says, that basically, the heresy of his day was, was literally reading certain Old Testament texts to attribute foul things about God that we wouldn't attribute to the worst brigand and thief. All right. Uh, so Origen said it was heresy to read the scriptures literally sometimes. All right. Now, there are other times when it's fine to read the scriptures literally, and we have to let the Holy Spirit, you know, lead us into those situations. Um, but, you know, there's if we understand that the end game of reading the scripture that God has for us, the end game for us is to see something about Jesus, to fill in the gap about something Jesus related, either his ministry, um, his kingdom, his giftings, his nature, his love, his virtue. Every scripture is pointing to Christ. And Jesus said that on the road to Emmaus in Luke 24. He said that all the prophets, you know, all the law, all the wisdom writings, all of them spoke of him to come, of Jesus to come. And he explained to those Emmaus disciples, and boy, would I have liked to have been there for that sermon. As he was walking down the road, he explained to them where he was in all the Old Testament. You know, and recently, I know I posted something, that there was a young boy the other day that went through every book in the Old Testament and showed where Jesus was in those books. You know, that Jesus, um, you know, was the Ark of the Covenant, that Jesus was Jacob's rock, that Jesus, every, every book, you know, the red cord in, in um, uh, with Rahab, everywhere that there's symbolic meaning in the Old Testament that points to Jesus coming in the New Testament. And I think that's part of the fun in reading the Old Testament because we're looking for Jesus. I'm not looking to understand, you know, the his Old Testament history and that that's the primary thing I'm looking to understand. I'm looking to see Jesus reflected through Old Testament, these Old Testament stories pointing to where we are at now. So anyhow, as we learn to read with the church fathers, we, uh, we understand that they largely read the scriptures non-literally. Uh, or allegorically, or Christologically. The, in other words, everything was symbolic of something that we're under in the New Testament. Let me give you the perfect example. In Galatians 4, Paul pulls out a literal text about Sarah and Hagar, 
And then he says, well, that's not what it means. <laughs> it's not talking about women back there, two different women. It's talking about two different covenants, the covenant of the law and the covenant of the spirit. And that we're not born under the covenant of the law, but we're born under the freedom of the spirit. And he also relates the two mountains uh, to that as well. Uh, um, uh, uh, as, as also being symbolic of the two covenants. So here's my point. I want to keep this, this session short. Is that if we're going to take an ancient document and try to understand how it was written, we first have to understand how the thing would have been read. So their reading techniques are very different than ours, and we've kind of become literal, so literal-minded, and what we're taught in school is just one literal precept after another, after another, after another, and the text is flat, and the text is closed, it's flat, you can't say anything outside of the text, you can't say it means anything other than it just literally says. And of course, Paul said that we're not to live by the dead letter, of, of scripture but the living spirit that the scripture gives meaning to it and that there's a veil and that there continues to be a veil of literalism that keeps modern day Jews from being able to see the subtext of scripture and subtext is a very important word and that's what we'll talk about next time thanks